All right, I've been wanting to make this video for a while for you guys. Um, I just want to get through all the AP physics exams this past year, just because uh, if I if I talked about the changes for next year, it might confuse you guys who are prepping for this this past year's exam. So there are some big changes to the entire AP physics curriculum and exam format for next year, and I want to go through that line by line and just explain because it's like a it's it's a pretty big deal. It's a lot of prep changes. The exam format. Changes changes for a as a quick summary for AP physics one and two a, a bit of content change and a medium pretty decent size um, AP exam format change and then for AP physics C it's primarily a huge AP exam format change right the content itself isn't really changing so um, let's kind of just kind of dive right into it here so um, the first thing um, let's talk about AP Physics 1, and we're going to go through one class at a time. So first off, they're adding fluids. This is probably like a huge portion right here. They are adding in fluids into um, the, this was usually previous part of AP Physics 2, but they're adding fluids. It will now be Unit 8. Um, this is a little bit confusing. They're changing, the, it, it, they're, re, they're also renumbering some units. So there is some renumbering that's going on here. It's not simply this. They're getting rid of unit three. Unit three, two, and three are being combined. And this is more in line, uh, oops, geez, combined um, for forces. So unit three was circular motion and gravity. It's being combined into here. And then um, rotation is being split into two units. Okay, so it is correct the number of units, but there are some changes uh, in that structure, and this makes sense. It was really tough to make rotation. A lot of people, I think, it under I think people underestimate how much work rotation was by calling it one unit. Rotation is really you learning all of it, all of the linear motion. You just apply the rotation motion, so you're gonna learn like four units of stuff into one unit. I my curriculum I had already split this out. I always split it into like rotation and dynamics and then energy and momentum and college boards doing a similar thing here. So that's probably like but ultimately it's one additional unit in fluids. Um they're going to be doing some stuff with power. That's pretty minor. They didn't really talk about power much before or require it. So it's like a one, it's just like a, a three minute explanation on, on something like that. And then the equations for motions for a simple harmonic motion, the equations were given there on the equation sheet, but very rarely used. So now we're actually going to be using this a lot more. Um, and that's just to beef up the simple harmonic motion. So those are pretty minor changes uh, a little bit in here. And this is just saying like, they can add in more styles of questions for multiple choice and objectives. So um, overall, like, the, so the big thing I would say takeaway is really the addition of fluids. The addition of fluids is going to be a, kind of a big deal. Um, the, the, the bigger deal for a lot of you are going to be the exam format. I think some of you who have taken AP Physics 1 might feel like, oh man, this is a, wait, so much better. First of all, there's um, we're going down to 40 multiple choice instead of 50 multiple choice, okay? And then removing the two select questions, I think that's really good. That was a very confusing one. I think some people didn't quite understand it. There was only like five of those on an exam every year. Um, that was a little bit tricky. So we are decreasing the time from 90 to 80 minutes. So you're dec you're decreasing it to, to uh, 10 multiple choice. You decrease to 10 minutes. You're getting more uh, time per question, which is always nice. Uh, I think the MCQ is always a bit of a rush. So this reduction is actually pretty good. You get about two minutes, whereas you had about 1.8 minutes per MCQ on average before. Now you have two minutes per MCQ. That's a that's a nice little, make it a little bit less time pressured. Um, you're also going to go down to four FRQs. And then notice the time, you're going to get 100 minutes on those four FRQs. So this is going to make the FRQs much less time pressured. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. The, the FRQs are going to be a little bit longer. And I'm going to probably dig into the FRQ styles in a separate video. But... Um, the FRQs will probably get a little bit longer overall, but um, overall you'll feel less time pressured because part of the hard part of five FRQs is you're trying to understand the scenario. You're trying to break down the situation, and that's that takes time no matter how short the FRQ is, right? So now you have less scenarios to kind of read. Um, you're given more time. The big thing here is these two, in terms of the FRQs, these two are, are, are kind of new. Um, previously, you had short answer, and then the dreaded paragraph answer, 
paragraph answer, which is a short answer. They are getting rid of the paragraph answer. There is no more paragraph FRQs. So any of you who've studied or prepped for paragraph FRQs or any of you teachers who prep them, you don't need to do a paragraph answer anymore. Mathematical routines is going to, both of these, I would say, are very similar to um, just what they were kind of coupled in, in, in the short answer. Short answer, mathematical routines is going to be a, a kind of a derivation related one. And like I said, I'm going to dig into that in a separate video, uh, the details on each of the FRQ styles. And I'm going to be adding that into my curriculum to the free curriculum to explain what are the different FRQ styles and how to prep for them. Um, and the translation between representations, this is one where you're going to be doing a lot of graphing as well as equations. Like you're making sure you understand the equation, the graphing, sketches, that kind of thing. That's what they mean by translation between representations there. So definitely a gra highly emphasize a graphing question on this part, like sketch a graph. Like I said, short answers used to cover those kinds of things, but now they're going to be explicitly separated and, and identified. And we're getting rid of that paragraph answer. The experimental design and the qualitative quantitative are largely staying the same. I think the qualitative quantitative is going to be a shorter FRQ overall. This was one of the bigger FRQs, and I think they I saw in the timings they are going to shorten that one a little bit. But like I said, I'll have a separate video to talk about the details of each of those FRQ styles. So overall, I think net positive, obviously, I actually do like this. I think less time pressure on the MCQ less time pressure on the FRQs, and I like these FRQs. Paragraph answered, I like the idea, I like the attempt. I think it was just one of those things that a lot of students, I know it's it's good if you can write and explain things. I think one of the challenges with a paragraph answer is you're not entirely sure what it is you're supposed to be putting in there. I think that's the big challenge, is like, what is it that you want to see at a, like if you like for the graders, what are they looking for explicitly? I think that's sometimes hard. Even for me, when I was going through the paragraph answers, I think that was a bit of a challenge sometimes to be like, well, do that? Do I? How much detail do I have to put in here? And I'm experienced, so I know the kinds of major things. But for a student to say like, can you stitch together everything that's required? What is sort of given knowledge that you don't have to explicitly state, and what are things that you do have to explicitly state? I think getting rid of that is nice. It does help in that sense. Um, so overall, I think this is a great, uh, great positive uh, increase. The the addition of fluids, by the way, is also nice. I think is also um, very common for algebra based physics classes in college. Like my my common analogy is if you look at like at Berkeley, just because I know the numberings there, physics seven A is the an engineering physics class, the equivalent of physics C. Physics 8A is the equivalent of the um, non-engineering physics class, which is kind of like supposed to be like AP Physics 1. And that one, they will cover fluids. They actually cover thermodynamics in there usually. But, you know, at least adding in fluids is more common. Whereas in um, the physics 7A, the calculus-based or engineering physics, fluids is sometimes included, not necessarily always included. Um, so I think this is pretty common for more alignment with with a topic. This is definitely better than when they had the circuits and electricity back a few years ago. Fluids is a more natural fit for um, for AP Physical 1, for a mechanics class. I also think the addition of fluids will make the exam a little bit easier. You have more content to cover, but fluids is one of those that like, it's an added topic. You usually don't confuse it with a rotation problem or, any, or, or energy or momentum. It's a pretty like, not a standalone topic, but um, it will be easier to identify. This is a fluids question, so I need to apply fluids principles when I'm doing this problem. Okay, AB Physics 2. Um, so they're not they're getting rid of the fluids, as we just talked about. Um, and then um, they're also renumbering them, like unit 9 through, sorry, unit 9 through 14 or something like that, instead of starting over at 1, just to just sort of say there's some continuity with AP Physics 1. Um, they're bringing back waves. Okay, waves disappeared in AP Physics 1 in 2020 um, during COVID and um, disappeared with electricity, electrostatics. And now, and it was kind of like, whoa, what happened to waves? Because in Physics 2, you would learn electromagnetic waves, but there was no like treatment of waves. Well, that's being brought back in. Uh, full treatment of waves, mechanical waves, resonance and sound, Doppler effect, beats, things like that. Um, I've actually started... I've put together the curriculum and the lessons actually for sound already in the AP Physics 2 curriculum, if you want to check it out. Um, so I've already I have already uh, added that stuff in. Um, 
They're also splitting up the geometric and physical. This is just organization, still same topic, still optics and still um, electromagnetic waves, but they're just sort of like separating them out, reorganizing a little bit of reorganizing this. And um, I, I think this one's interesting, a more comprehensive treatment of circuits. I think a, a, a more detailed analysis of circuits. This one, we'll kind of see how that goes. I usually give a pretty detailed treatment of circuits. Um, obviously as an electrical engineer, I know a lot, lot, lot more circuit techniques and analysis. I do not think you will need to know that much more, but it's just sort of like a little bit more rigorous than just sort of some of the qualitative stuff they've done before, um, on some of that. Um, and they're adding in a new topic about black body radiation, which connects thermodynamics and modern physics. So, and Compton scattering. So these are pretty minor topics. These are pretty easy things to, um, cover they're not like major things to include in there and then the exam format will be identical to the ap physics one change so again decrease to 40 mcqs we shorten the time so more time there and then again the same four techniques so there's going to be this alignment between ap physics one and two um in terms of the exam format because you know in 2024 right for you guys the last one who just took the exam it was four frqs versus uh five frqs in ap physics one a little bit inconsistent so now it's going to be standardized going to be very similar almost an ex identical exam format that's probably the biggest change that leads us into ap physics c is that there's no real content changes but we are doing the exact same things that ap physics one and two so now there's an alignment between AP Physics C exams and AP Physics 1 and 2 exams to make them more similar. Um, you are, guys are getting a huge change in timing. In order to align with the AP Physics 1 and 2, you you went from 40, you're gonna go to you're gonna go from 35 to 40, but look at this, you're doubling your time here. Okay, not doubling, but like a huge increase in time. So again, going up to that two minutes per time. You know, I've done the practice test for AP Physics C. I've gone through them. Honestly, I think this is a good change. The AP Physics C multiple choice and FRQs tend to be heavily, heavily time pressured in the past, which is why the curve was so generous. It was so generous that like, it was very, very difficult for students to complete and have a high accuracy. I, I think there's no one ever gets a perfect score on the AP Physics C exams because of the intense time pressure you're under. I don't think that's like a necessarily a good thing in terms of like, you know, identifying whether or not you're good at physics. I, I think, there, you know, it needs to be timed. I think the time pressure was a little intense before. So I think this is going to be better. I think what you'll see as a result of this is that the scoring is going to be a little bit tougher. It's not going to be that 50, 60% to get a five that you need in AP Physics C. I think the threshold will be higher closer to AP Physics 1 and 2 in order to get that 5. So for some of you who might think the test is easier, I think the, the threshold for getting a 5 is actually going to be higher because more people are going to do better because more people are not just going to be getting things wrong simply because of the time pressure. Okay, the FRQ styles, it used to be 3 FRQs, 15 minutes per FRQ for 45 minutes total. Now you'll get 4 FRQs that are um, good. I think the other important thing of this four FRQs is with three FRQs, it was always tough to give you a question at every topic. You kind of miss the topic sometimes. Now with this new change of having these FRQs similar to the AP Physics 1 and 2, and then you have four of them, you're definitely gonna hit a lot more of the topic. So it's not gonna be as much rant RNG when it comes to like what kind of questions and what kind of topics you're gonna be tested on. This is gonna give you a more comprehensive look at all of the topics and be tested on everything instead of just being like hey this year i didn't get a rotation question woo lucky me so there's kind of like that that kind of um uh, advantages for having the the questions like this and then you're going to 100 minutes for the frq so way less time pressure on the frqs this is the one i'm most familiar with on how time pressured the ap physics c exam used to be just because um you were always i mean i did all the frqs in one sitting and i was like look takes me about 25 minutes to do them that's an experienced teacher good rule of thumb is that uh an exam should take at least two to three times longer than that it takes the teacher to do it and that's a good rule of thumb and there's no way for like 45 minutes was the frqs before 15 minutes for me to do each of those frqs in about like say seven six or seven minutes was a little bit unrealistic okay so um I think this is going to be a good, like, good, good change 
to the exam format. I'm actually really excited for this, even if some of you feel like, well, now it's a huge longer exam. I know the downside being that you feel like you won't be able to do it one afternoon, um, but it is a better assessment. You gotta think that this is a test that's supposed to assess your entire year. There's, I've never seen a physics final over a whole semester in the entire mechanics be simply like a 90 minute exam. Like that is gonna cut out so much stuff. So this is gonna be a better representation, a better evaluation and a better thorough treatment of like what it is that you guys have learned over the past, um, over the past uh, topic. E&M's gonna be primarily the same. There's a, there's a few, oh, I, I did talk about some of these things. Um, they were talking about um, uh, using similar language as AP Physics 1. Um, so basically like stronger alignment between some of the terminology. Their terminology was sometimes misaligned, so they're just gonna be more consistent. So, um, E and M is going to be very similar with AP Physics two. They're going to align. They're going to align some of the curriculum, um, um, and then they're going to add in a couple of minor topics like LC circuits, which is like a very rarely, maybe on a practice test you would have seen an LC circuit. They're going to do a more de in depth or make sure make sure that you understand what an LC circuit is. Uh, some of you might be like, who take an AP Physics E and M might be like, well, what the heck's LC circuit? It's a little oscillator that happens, but sometimes we talk about. Um, it not being tested very heavily, but that's going to be like a more important topic now that they have more, a longer exam to evaluate more of your understanding. Um, so stronger alignment and then basically some renumbering of the units. Content wise, nothing really major in the ENM. It's really about the exam format, which is identical to the physics C mechanics changes too. Again, all the things that I think are really good, longer exam format, um, less time pressured, um, Com encompassing more of the topics you're supposed to know for those things. I think those are all great things for AP Physics C. The downside being that you won't necessarily, it will be harder to schedule both AP exams because they will be full three hour exams. So that means like you're gonna have to, you know, pick and choose a little bit or scheduling is good. If you're, if you're on a case where you're taking both of these exams, um, it could be a little bit, you know, more overlap with your schedule with your other AP exams. So. Anyway, um, put in the comments below if you have any other follow-up questions. I will be doing a more depth uh, look at what each of those FRQ styles is gonna be in the coming months, um, just to help you prep for what it is that the exam format that uh, you're gonna be looking, what, what it's gonna be looking like, just because, um, and, and I, you know, I'm gonna probably be busy trying to extract past questions that align with those things, but put in the comments below if you have any other questions or any comments or any thoughts about the AP exam format changes for AP Physics.